So again, I started, I got my drop height. I got my trials, I averaged them together, and then I found my average for each of those. Do that for ball one, do that for ball two. Okay, I'll give you a second to do that. Some of you, most of you are probably done with that part already, so I'm only going to give you about a minute. If you're not done with that, you can always call me back to it. Um, but I want to keep us, keep us moving in the right direction. All right, so once you've got that, we're ready to do the graph. So the directions for the graph are here. So let me go through them very quickly, and then I'll show you how to do them one step at a time. So the first thing you're going to do is go to desmos.com. Backslash calculator. Okay, that's going to look like this. It's going to give you a blank screen with stuff. Then what you're going to do is you're going to uh, make sure to label the axes. Here we go. This will be easier. Okay. Start by making a table by clicking the plus icon at the top left. I'll show you that in a second. Label the x axes using the wrench icon in the right. It's this guy up here. Oh, and it's this guy up here. Okay, zoom out so you can see the whole graphs and so it fits the page. Create two best fit lines using the equations. Copy a picture um, and then copy and paste the link as well. Let's just fix the first three. So, first things first. You need to enter a table. So you click the plus sign. Okay, you click table. And you're going to just type in your numbers. So you're going to type in your drop heights, okay? And you're going to type in your averages. So your drop heights go here in the X. Your averages go here in the Y. You're going to need to do two tables because you have two different objects. You're going to do one table for each one. So go ahead and enter your data in, okay? If you're doing um, a graph by hand, you don't have to do this part yet. You're going to have to do no more for the next step. Okay? So I'm going to come around and see if anyone's having trouble putting the numbers in. If you're doing it by hand, I'll show you the next step here in a second.
about what to do once you got the numbers in. So once you got the numbers in, yours is going to look like this, except it's probably actually going to look like this. So yours is actually probably going to look like this. are yours is going to look really funky like something like this and not with any numbers anywhere so what we need to do is we need to get it on the screen so there's a couple ways to do that um, you can drag it around and kind of look for the numbers to show up um, or you can do what I think is easier if you click on this wrench you can choose what the numbers are so you want your smallest number to be smaller than your smallest number on the chart. So like when I look at my chart here, my smallest number is 40. I need to start at a number less than 40. I usually like to start at a negative number, so I'm going to pick like negative 1. Okay? And then my largest value needs to be larger than my largest value. So my largest value is 80, so I need to pick a number bigger than that. I'm going to pick 100. Now, I need to do the Y. My smallest needs to be smaller than my smallest, so smallest is 33. I'm going to start again at a negative number. I'm going to start at negative 1. And my largest needs to be bigger than my largest. My largest is 71, so I'm going to go up to, well, 81.5 is fine, but I'll just do 80. And there you go. Now all your numbers fit on the graph. Your graph should take up most of the page. Don't I don't want any I want any graphs that look like this. Okay? I want any graphs that look like that. I want your numbers to fit uh, mostly on the page. So try to make them as big as you can. Uh, I like to be able to see the axis lines, which is why I started a negative number. Okay. If you're doing it by hand, Here's what you should be doing. 
If you're doing it by hand, you also need to pick a scale. You need to make a number that's bigger than your biggest and starts at smaller than your smallest for both the x and the y. So when I looked at this, I said, OK, I'm going to go from 0 to 80 for my drop height. And I'm going to go from 0 to 80 on my bounce height also. So I started by counting at 0. And I said, OK, I need to make sure my largest number is near the right side of my page. So instead of going every one, you know, 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, I skipped 4. So I skipped 4, 10, skipped 4, 20, skipped 4, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. OK, and I would do the same of that for the y-axis, OK? So in the y-axis, what was my starting value? 33. So this is 30 up here. So anyway, I'd do the same thing, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40. Again, you want your largest to need near the top of the page. So go ahead and get your stuff set up. You should also label. Label what your x-axis is. Label what your y-axis is. You can do that online also. Click on that wrench. Write in drop height for your x. Write in bounce height for your y. OK? I'm going to come around again to see how y'all are doing and if we need any help here.